Welcome back. In this video, we're going to go over some hands-on examples and exercises to use um, Google and Spreadsheet to help us uh, solve time value of money problems. Let's get started. Our first example is to compute future value. Uh, we're going to use the same example that you have seen before. Say you invest $1,000 for two years at 10% per year. The question is, how much would you have in year two, assuming that you're able to reinvest the interest? First, we're going to go over how to create your own model. And uh, I'm going to be using Google Sheet. However, uh, Excel works exactly the same way. Just remember that the input variable names are different for Excel. I uh, encourage you to pause the video at this point, open up a spreadsheet software, whether it be Excel or Google, um, and then create this model. So put in, uh, make sure that you, you put in um, each item in the right column and the right row so that when we create the formula, it will work for you. So pause the video and when we come back, we will, st we will uh, work on this problem. Welcome back. Now that you have opened up your spreadsheet software and you have created the uh, backbone of the model, uh, let's take a look at the uh, example that we are, we are working on. So we said we will invest $1,000 for two years at 10% per year with annual compounding. So the time unit we're working with is years. Um, I'm going to write that in here just to be uh, very clear what time unit we're working with. And then the next item is compounding frequency because this is annual compounding. Um, we're working with once per year. And then the interest rate. So again, this will be, uh, we said is 10% per year. So we type 10%. Again, this is per year. Time is two years, so two years. I always type the time unit and make sure that you put that in the next column, not in the same column. Uh, we don't have an annuity with this. This is a uh, single cash flow situation. So the annuity payment is zero and the present value is $1,000 because that's how much you are investing today. Um, and the type of annuity, again, we don't have an annuity, so we can omit that. And we can use the future value function in our, uh, to compute the answer. So to use a function, you always start with the equal sign. So type equal sign, and then FV, this is our future, future value function. Uh, you can click on that, or if you type open parenthesis, so once you open the parenthesis, it will tell you all the variables that, all the input variables. So the first one is interest rate. And in our example, that will be 10%. So you can use the up and down arrow to uh, select the correct input variable. And then the, put in a comma. So comma, that will move you onto the next variable. The next variable is number of period. So once again, we can use our arrow key. Uh, number of period is two years. And comma, the next is payment amount. So that is listed here. Uh, comma, go to the next one, present value. So present value is $1,000. And then um, the end of beginning, this is the type of annuity that is located in um, B11. So again, use your arrow key to go to the corresponding uh, cell that you have input the variable values. Now we have put in all the input variable. We will uh, complete this function by using the close parenthesis. So notice that it has um, the very the where the variables are located. And once we are done, we press enter to complete the formula. So this is our future value, and notice that is negative one thousand uh, $1,210 instead of the $1,000. Uh, so the reason why this is negative is because of the inflow outflow assumption. So 
So it's not that it's negative, but the calculate uh, the uh, the app assumes that if you are putting in a thousand dollars, then you're taking out one thousand two hundred and ten dollars. So one is an inflow and one is an outflow. One of the greatest advantage of using um, an Excel spreadsheet to do or a Google spreadsheet to do your analysis is that you can ask all kinds of what if questions. Uh, so let's say in the original problem, we look at an investment for two years. We said, what happened if the investment is over 30 years? How would that affect uh, our future value? And in fact, this is the other uh, case in the example when we look at the power of compounding. So all you have to do is change from two years to 30 years, and your answer will get updated. And remember that if you invest $1,000 over 10 years, you will grow to $17,450. So once you have created the model, then you can use it over and over again. If you don't want to create your own model, you can also download the template, and I'll show you how I set up the template. So when you use the template link or the address, uh, it should get you to this template directly. If you use the link, it will uh, download the file for you, and then you can either open it in Excel, or you can upload the template back into Google. Uh, so if you haven't done so, uh, pause the video and get that started. All right, welcome back. And now let me just go over briefly how the templates are set up. Uh, when you look at the bottom of the template, you'll see different tabs. So the first one computes future value, the second one computes present value, then the payment, uh, time period, and the interest rate. So each tab will compute different things. Uh, in, the uh, in the template, um, the blue area is what you will uh, put in. Uh, for time unit, um, for the uh, interest rate and the time, this template assumes that you're going to put in the per year interest rate, which is the most common. So this is if you get an APR, for example, APR stands for annual percentage rate. So if you're working with a loan with an APR, you can just put APR in here. And then the time unit is also stated in number of years. Um, and once you put it in, then it will do the automatic adjustment for you. However, if you do have annuity payment, then you have to be careful whether or not you're entering uh, the per month payment or per year payment. And uh, this will not be adjusted. Okay, let's get started. We're going to use the same example. So the first part of the example is $1,000 at 10% per year for two years. So in terms of the time unit, we're going to put in a year. Uh, so the compounding frequency is once per year. And the interest rate is 10%. Uh, the time unit in the beginning is two years. Uh, there is no annuity payment, and the present value is $1,000. Uh, again, we don't have an annuity, so notice that when you type this in as year, it automatically converts this into 10% per year and, two, and for two years. Not surprisingly, you get the same result. We can also look at this analysis for 30 years. So all we have to do is change from two years to 30 years. And uh, I encourage you to explore the formulas that is used in this uh, in the template. And you'll notice that they are very similar. We're using the future value function to compute the future value answers. Now let's take a look at another example. Uh, as, as I mentioned earlier, the future value formula and the time value of money formula can be actually used to not just uh, work with money problem. You can actually use these uh, tools to help you solve any compounded growth problems. Um, we're going to go with another financial planning problem in this class, of course, uh, and that is to forecast the impact of inflation on your living expenses. So let's say in here, we assume that your current living expenses is $40,000 per year. And you assume that the inflation will be 3% per year. Uh, in the U.S., historically, interest rate has been around 2 to 3% per year. So this is a rather conservative estimate. We think that prices is going to go up 3% per year on average. 
He said, how much would you need in annual income to maintain the same level of spending in 40 years? So in other words, if you are spending $40,000 today and prices are going to go up 3% per year, how much would you need in 40 years to be able to buy the same amount of items as $40,000 today? Go ahead and pause the video and either call up your own model that you created or use the template to solve this problem. And then come back and we'll see if we get the same results. Welcome back. Uh, is this what you find? So uh, we, are we are looking at inflation rate of 3% per year. So the time unit we are working with are years. And so it's one time per year. The rate we're going to use here is the inflation rate. So that's 3% per year. And the time unit is 40 years. There's no annuity. The single amount is meaning we are starting in the beginning of our estimation period. The living expenses is $40,000 per year. We want to know after 40 years, how much would that grow to? So again, after 40 years, it would have grown to $130,481. So what that means is over 40 years, what you need uh, today for $40,000, 40 years later, this, uh, you will need $130,500 approximately to have the equivalent purchasing power as $40,000 today. So this is another application of uh, future value calculations. Next, let's take a look at present value. So in finance and financial planning, the value of something uh, we used to, that if you just say the term value, we are referring to present value. If we want to uh, ascertain the future value or the ending value of an investment or a loan, we will specifically say, how much will you have in 40 years? What's the future value? You just say, what is the value of this investment? Then we're assuming we're talking about present value. The term we use, as we said earlier, is discounting. So discounting means finding the present value of some future amount. For example, how much do I have to put aside today and no additional savings, so just a single amount that I put in today to reach a certain goal in the future. Let us uh, look at an example to see how this problem can be solved. Say your grandparents wanted to give you $3,000 three years from now as a graduation gift. They plan to deposit enough money today into an account and the account will pay 6% per year, but with monthly compounding. How much do they need to put aside today into that account? So that's the question. So they are just going to put in a single amount into this account and let it earn interest. And they want to make sure that at the end of three years, you will be able to have $3,000. So there are a number of items that we need to pay attention to. So first of all, the $3,000 is three years from now. So you, you're not looking at 3,000 today, but you're looking at $3,000 three years from now. So that will be future value. And so they're gonna put the money in the bank and the bank is gonna pay 6% per year. However, it will have monthly compounding and a lot of banks, uh, CD and so forth, do have monthly compounding. So that means that your time unit is months and which translate into 12 times per year because there are 12 months per year. And they ask, how much do you need to deposit today? So you're asked to find the present value. So let's go ahead and see how you can set up the model on your own. So let's open up your spreadsheet software. We're gonna put in the label in here. So pause the video and set up your model and then we'll look at how we'll complete it together. Ready, let's get started. So we already mentioned that the time units are months. And because we are working with months, the compounding frequency is 12 or 12 times per year. And the interest rate is, uh, remember, we need to convert to the time unit. So it's 6% per year. So it's equal to 6%, but we have to divide that by the number of compounding frequencies. So divide it by 12 and 
you may want to have more decimal places. So that is half a percent per month. So make sure that the time unit is um, correct. So, um, and then next is time. So again, we have three years, but we are working with months. So it's equal to three years times 12 months per year. So there are total of 36 months. Uh, we don't have any annuity payment. Uh, the future value, the amount that we want in the future is $3,000. Uh, again, this is not an annuity, so we can leave that. Now you have enter all the input variable. Now let's use the present value function. So to compute this, we'll use the present value function. So that's PV. And once again, similar to work done with the future value, we'll just enter each input variable. So the first one is rate. So it is half a percent per month. We'll separate each input variable with a comma. So put comma. And the next one is number of periods. And that's 36 months. Again, very important to have the time unit. Uh, the payment amount is zero. And the future value is $3,000. And that's all the argument we have um, and then the last one is type we don't really need that but we'll include that for complete uh, for completeness and then we'll finish the formula by typing in the close parenthesis sign uh, once you're ready we can uh, press enter and the answer in this case is two thousand five hundred and six dollars and ninety three cents so in other words if your grandparents deposit twenty five hundred dollars today and the bank promised to pay 6% per year compounded monthly, they that amount would grow to very close to $3,000. Uh, so they don't need to put aside $3,000. They only need to put aside $2,500 today in an account that earns 6%, and they'll have the $3,000 um, that they want as gifts. And we can also use the template. So this is the template. Uh, so make sure you use the, go to the tab that says compute present value. So you, you can just click on the next tab. Uh, so the same problem, we remember the unit we are working with are uh, months and the compounding frequency will be 12 times per year. So the interest rate here, you enter it as annual. So both interest rate and time unit, we are entering on a per year basis in the template. So just 6% per year. And the template will automatically convert that to per month. Uh, same as here, if you enter three years, the template will convert that into 36 months. There's no annuity payment in here. Future value is $3,000. And that's all you need to do. And of course, the template will give you exactly the same answer. We're going to pause the video here. When we come back, we're going to continue uh, with solving more time value of money examples uh, and also creating your own model. See you soon.